clarify. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I'll try to get us back on to time a little bit. Uh, sure. Nitesh was not able to attend, um, and I will give the talk for him. The slides are available with this bit.ly if you need to get them. BioC 2022 GPU. What are GPUs? Why do we need them? How are they useful for Bioconductor? And where can we can I find GPUs? I'll also do a little bit of a live demo with an actual GPU equipped machine. In the room, how many folks are actually computing on GPUs? Not all that many? All right. Well, <laughs> and uh, you know, the idea is that we're going to be seeing more software that sort of does a better job if a GPU is available, and so we want to be prepared to use that type of software. In right. fact, bioconductor packages are coming online that will make use of it, and we will show you one of those. Uh, graphical processing unit has many cores, is capable of parallel computation, and is different from a CPU. Um, streaming multiprocessors are used in there. Each streaming multiprocessor is a multi-core machine. Each GPU is therefore a multi-multi-core machine. The streaming multiprocessors share the same global memory. And each streaming multiprocessor has streaming processors, which are the individual cores running threads. And those technical issues one can learn about on one's own time. The idea is that if the computation is set up properly, they can go faster. And there are now well-exercised packages for statistical learning, Keras and TensorFlow, that are becoming more prevalent. So a couple of bioconductor packages, and there are some new ones being submitted that um, take advantage of GPUs, do this by using Reticulate to interface to TensorFlow or Keras. Reticulate is the R Python interface. And you can get GPUs to try these things out fairly easily from all the cloud providers. And I'm going to talk about one interface to the Google cloud provider that is made by NHGRI, or made through NHGRI funding. It's called Anvil, Genomic Data Science Analysis, Visualization, and Informatics Lab Space. So uh, Anvil has a, a very refined user interface. Uh, in which when you get yourself on there, you've logged in and you have started a workspace, you can configure a machine to use. And one of the things you can do is say, I'm going to enable GPUs and I will select a particular type of GPU. There's a whole family of them available here and I'll tell the system how many GPUs I want. And then I will um, get this thing going by pushing launch. And we'll do a little bit of that in just a moment. Um, <clears throat> this is just a view of a workspace that Nitesh made that helps do all these demonstrations. And there's a notebook, a Python, a Jupyter notebook within that that um, will uh, demonstrate this. And we'll jump over there in a moment. Now, um, <clears throat> it turns out that in Terra, this is the underlying uh, system for uh, using Anvil, uh, it is not yet possible to use our studio with GPUs. So this is done with a Jupyter Notebook, but that will be rem remedied in, in the near future. And so we were going to also develop a new container family that has uh, machine learning uh, equipment, including the um, CUDA stuff for NVIDIA GPUs embedded in it so you don't have to do these installations. And uh, if you have other questions, you can ask Nitesh uh, on Slack or pose questions to the support site. I will just show a little bit of this live. This is a Jupyter Notebook here running in Terra. The system that we have configured is um, <clears throat> the default R version. And I have asked for four CPUs and two Tesla T4 GPUs. And that is going to cost me 91 cents per hour to operate. And we have a work a notebook here 
and we can run some code in the notebook. For example, we can check the bioconductor version. And uh, we can then verify I installed all of these things previously. So Keras is available. We have a full Python configuration report here telling us what is there. And then when we want to start to use TensorFlow, we can ask whether the GPU is known to it. Sometimes that's a bit of a cumbersome thing to establish. In this case, TensorFlow knows that the GPU is there, and we can ask it to list all the devices, the CPU and the GPU. So this is just using Reticulate to operate with the TensorFlow Python packages and run certain functions and methods that are available there. And here we can ask again, is the GPU available? And it says it is. And so now I'm not going to run this code. Um, this has to do with the generation of some data. But here is what it looks like when you actually want to fit an auto, a, a variational autoencoder. Um, this function is defined in the VA experts package and the different components uh, which are uh, autoencoder and uh, deep learning concepts implemented as layers, ReLU units, sigmoidal activation function, and so forth, all very high level expression of how we are going to build up this autoencoder, run it. And then this, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll run that one there. I think that should work okay. And then there's a very nice little uh, way of visualizing the model that was actually specified. And that takes a second to run, but it's a nice way of um, showing the actual components of the deep learning model that is going to be used with the GPU. So I'm going to stop there because all of this stuff is available for your inspection in the open, uh, thanks to Nitesh's work. And um, if there are questions, I might be able to answer some. But uh, I hope this is sufficiently explanatory that you could get going if you wanted to uh, on your own. Anybody have a question for Vince slash Natesh? Can you just go back to the URL at the beginning of the slides? Sure. These slides have the URL, which I will get in a moment here. Oh, something wrong with the desk. Thank you. Okay. I see. I see a question from um, online for an earlier speaker. If we are done with refresh questions for for Qian from Levi. Um, Levi asks: Have you thought about submitting reuse metadata or data to Zenodo through the REST interface, like through Zen Four R? She's on the call. Is Qian still on? No. Is Chian still here? Maybe not on the call. Maybe not. No. We need access to the slide. Someone can't get access to the slides. These slides? Yeah, I can. Yeah, the, the slides are um, not accessible. Okay, Chian is now on the call. Hi, Chian. Welcome back. There was a question for you. Okay, sure. Um, from Levi, uh, he says, have you thought about submitting reuse metadata or data to Zenodo through its REST interface? You think, for example, Zen 4R? Zenodo, yeah, I, yeah, I think that can be one of the, one of the place that we share the data sets. We have considered share the data to like on some like cloud space, like Envy. We were just thinking about that. So Zenodo could be a place that we, um, deposit the data. But I think we we are more like likely to deposit the the recipes, um, which are more light light lightweight, so people can generate the data locally using our functions. There can be different possibilities. Anybody else have a question for any of our speakers? Is there a possibility in future for, we say, sparse array to be to work better with GPUs to speed up sort of like loading and operations on some of the big sparse matrix? 
<coughs> so using sparse array to, to work better with GPUs in the future? Oh, uh, I, was, I was thinking about this when Vince was presenting about the GPUs that maybe, you know, it, it could be, it, there's a possibility maybe to even to improve to improve even more the performance of those objects by using GPUs. Yeah, uh, why not? Uh, I'm not there yet because as <laughs> you've seen my uh, list of things I still have to do before that thing works. <laughs> All right, then I think we're going to end the session and I'll uh, see you guys very next thing. Thank you. Thank you. In the previous room. Yeah. No, the other, the, the original one. From this one. And the other one. All right, we're going to end it for a while. I'm going to do it. Um,